करुणाम करुणा तरंगताक्षी धृत पाशांगुश पुष्पाणचापिरावृता मयूख अहम विभावये भवानी नमस्ते सो we're going to continue with these wonderfully blissful <laughs> thousand holy names of goddess lalita nama 122 shambhavi shiva is known as shambhu and his wife is shambhavi vishnu sahasranama nama 38 is shambhave which is interpreted as one who gives comforts to the devotees in that way both shiva and lalitambika give comfort to their devotees there is a mudra called shambhavi mudra generally used in kundalini meditation focusing both eyes internally towards agnya chakra and lifting the consciousness upwards by correspondingly raising the eyeballs is shambhavi mudra there are other interpretations also which we'll get into in just a second shambhavi ha huh? not only means that she gives benedictions and blessings to her devotees it can also be interpreted as she is everything ha huh? shambhavi So in that way we see that she is the manifestation she is the universe she is the manifested part of godhead with qualities saguna brahman whereas shiva represents the unmanifested godhead nirguna brahman so we've talked about this numerous times <laughs> not going to go all over it again but there are many series where you can study this aspect of the reality now about this mudra this is one of those don't try this at home kids huh because why you have to be qualified to do kundalini meditation by qualified it means that you have completed karma yoga and bhakti yoga and you are ready to make the transition to raja yoga so unless you have cleaned up your karma with karma yoga and got a sufficient stock of pious activities trying to do these meditations or trying to force them is going to lead to bad results at the very least you might get a eye strain headache <laughs> or basically you'll try it it won't do anything and you'll just forget about it but in the hands of a qualified meditator this is a very powerful technique the eyes don't always only open outward they also open on the inside huh i like to say that when i close these eyes eyelids on the outside the eyelids on the inside open and then the gaze is directed within It's not enough just to close your eyes. You also have to open them on the inside. So that's what we're talking about when we say a qualified meditator, someone who has an inner space, someone who has inner vision. Now I was very fortunate. My inner vision was awakened when I was about 31 years old uh, by a, a Sikh guru. a disciple of Radha Swami who I just happened to run into in Oregon so I'm very fortunate in that regard my inner hearing was already opened by my music teacher Ali Akbar uh, but he also opened my inner sight and from there I developed it on my own so you can do this too worshipers of Shiva 
are called Shang Bhavas. She is the mother of Song Bhavas. Saundarya Lahari 34 says, Shari Rang Tvang Shang Bho. You, Shakti, are the body of Shiva. The next shloka says, Shiva Yuvati Bhavena, assuming the role of Shiva's wife. Such narrations are plenty to affirm that she always remains as a part of Shiva, both physically and mentally. Shangbhavi also refers to a young girl of eight years. There is a ritual called Kanya Puja, explained in Srimad Devi Bhagavatam 3.25.26, about worshipping her in the form of girls of different ages during Navaratri. If such a ritual is performed by the prescribed method, it is said that the devotee will become prosperous and wealthy. So there's Shiva, and then there's Shiva, or Shiva and Shakti. And she is the manifestation of everything, therefore even including Shiva's body. This is hard to imagine for someone who isn't self-realized. I know, a lot of this stuff is. But if you just take our word for it and meditate on it, maybe she will give you the vision Maybe she'll give you the realization of how this is so. I really can't explain it. <laughs> I mean, I have explained it in innumerable ways, but to actually realize it is to get the vision and know the truth of it. Now also, during the festival called Navaratri, which happens twice a year in the spring and in the fall, in this are many, many, many uh, ceremonies and rituals prescribed by the scriptures. The Sri Vidya, the Tantras are full of rituals that you can do to correct any bad karma that you might have and to store up good karma that will eventually lead you to self-realization. And this is one of them. Each different group of girls of different ages is worshipped with a different ritual. And in between, there are offerings made to the fire and to the deity of the goddess and so on. Navaratri, if done properly, gives all around prosperity, health and auspiciousness to the whole community. And of course, the problem is that nobody does it properly except in big, big temples that have a staff of very highly trained brahmanas, because the rituals are quite elaborate. But if you can participate, or even just watch a ritual like this, it gives tremendous benefits, just incalculable benefits. Nama 123, Sharada Radhya. Sharada means Saraswati, the goddess of speech. She is worshipped by Saraswati. Sharada could also mean Vach Devis, the authors of this Sahasra Nam. This Nama means that she is worshipped by people with knowledge gained from Vedas and Shastras. She is worshipped for nine days in the month of October November, called Navaratri or Sharada Navaratri, meaning nine nights of worship of Sharada. Shakti worship is always done in the night, as per Tantra Shastra. It is said that Vishnu is to be worshipped in the morning, Shiva in the evening, and Lalitambika at night. Apart from the Sharada Navaratri, there is the Vasantra Navaratri celebrated in April-May. Possibly this Nama could mean Sharada Navaratri. Sharada Navaratri, the rites of spring. And actually, this is celebrated in many forms by traditional or tribal people all over the world, especially in the temperate zones where the planting season is very short and everything depends on the fertility of the soil and so on. So, this fertility is gained by worship of the goddess. 
Huh? Try to understand. Our silly, paltry, material science is not the cause of the fertility of the soil. The soil is part of the earth, and the earth is a living being, a goddess, an expansion of Lalita. So when we worship Lalita, automatically Mother Earth is pleased, and therefore she gives abundant uh, fertility for the growing season. Uh, whether it's short or long. People don't understand. The scriptures are giving the real wisdom. Uh, the earth is alive, and the proof of this is her response to our pollution by changing the climate and making us very uncomfortable and much harder to live on this planet. And this will continue until we wise up. Nama 124. Sharvani. Linga Purana 128, 15 to 17, says that Shiva has eight cosmic forms that correspond to the five basic elements, Akasha, air, fire, water, and earth, soul, sun, and moon. Shiva's Bhima form is Akasha, Ugra is air, Rudra is fire, Bhava is water, Sharva is earth, Pashupati is soul, Ishana is sun, and Mahadeva is moon. The Sharva form of Shiva represents the water element, and Sharva's wife is Sharvani. Their son is Mangal, Mars, one of the nine planets referred in Vedic astrology. Now this is actually another deep name, even though there isn't much in the commentary about it. We made one video called Proof of Earth Goddess in Water. And that refers to a scientific paper in which it's described that water actually records energy or vibrations. And because of that, actually the whole natural world is linked down to the mantle of the Earth's crust through the circulation of water. So if you want to know how is this goddess alive, or where is the evidence of her life processes, you need look no further than the water cycle, which of course permeates the whole biosphere. For performing remedies for afflicted planets, one has to thoroughly study the afflicted planets and perform propitiation accordingly. The ill effects of the planets will not be totally eradicated by merely performing rituals or visiting certain specified temples. The day and time of the propitiating ritual to be performed is to be fixed, taking into account the Star Lord and its sub-lord. For example, if in a horoscope planet Mars is afflicted, performing remedies on a Tuesday may not be efficacious. The appropriate day would be the day connected to the Star Lord or Sub Lord of Mars. Feeding the poor and animal feeding are very important in eradicating the evil effects of a planet. Ideally, one should go to orphanages and feed them personally. The satiation expressed in their faces is capable of eradicating any kind of planetary afflictions. Mantra Japa is another useful way to ward off the evil effects of planets. Planetary propitiation should be done in person and not through someone else. Planets are incapable of causing any afflictions to those who repose unshakable faith in God. So now I know all you skeptics out there are going, oh, this is old fashioned, nobody believes this anymore. Look, just because you don't believe it, doesn't mean it doesn't work when it's done properly. The difficulty is finding the adequate astrological guidance. And that's why a fully qualified Shastric Jyotishi, uh, or Vedic astrologer, is essential in performing these corrective rituals. And when they don't work, it's because people perform them any old way and not actually according to the directions in Shastra. So this is a great science. Huh? And Western culture is so much 
against this because it makes us work every day of the week and without any reference to the changes in the stars and planets, whether they're auspicious or propitious or not so <laughs> inauspicious, uh, people go ahead and try to do things anyway, whether it's a good time for it or not. And then they wonder why sometimes things just blow up and don't work and so on. They don't even consult the uh, Vedic horrorary, uh, the, the daily aspectarian, which gives the star, which is called a nakshatra, actually the moon phase, and the sublord and so on. You have to get the education and nobody can do it for you. It's better to go to the origin, to the original scriptures themselves and study how the universe actually works. Nama 125. Sharma Dayani. Sharma means happiness. She confers happiness on her devotees. Conferring happiness is her habit as she is the Divine Mother. Please refer to Namas 192, Sukha Prada, 953, Sharmada, and 968, Sukha Kari, which convey the same meaning. I've said this, I don't know, a dozen times or more on this channel, that when you chant her names, when you study her literatures that contain narrations of her glories and so on, you get inconceivable, uh, un unknowable happiness from within, causelessly, apparently. I mean, there's nothing outside causing the happiness. It's not coming through the senses. It's coming directly from the heart. Like, you'll often notice that my voice kind of chokes up when I'm reading these names or their explanations. That's because she is active within. She is giving happiness. Anytime we contemplate her good qualities and her beautiful relationship with her devotees. So the only way <laughs> to prove this, that this exists is to become a devotee yourself and perform these recitations and rituals and studies and experience the results directly. Nama 126, Shankari, wife of Shankara, a form of Shiva, is known as Shankari. Shang means happiness and Kara means doer. Therefore, Shankara is known to give happiness and his wife Shankari has the same quality. <laughs> Shiva and Shakti do not have any difference in qualities between them. That is why Shiva and Parvati are said to be father and mother of the universe. No one can have a child all by themselves. Male and female conjugating together is required. Why is this? Well, as above, so below. The Hermetic Principle states that as it is in heaven, so it is on earth. So if we have to mix male and female to get offspring, in order to create the world, God's male and female form have to come together in union. See? So that's how everything works. <laughs> People get all mystical about this stuff huh? and speculate like crazy about how the uh, spiritual world works. But it works in just the same way, according to the same principles as everything else. <laughs> Nature is the same. It rhymes all the way from the top to the bottom. So even we see very small uh, creatures having male and female sex. And so the same is true of God and goddess. And in the succeeding names, we'll see how they give happiness to their favorite devotees. Aum Tatsat, Aum Shakti, Aum.